How McLaren managed to throw away the 2007 World Championship remains one of the biggest mysteries of Lewis Hamilton's F1 career. It's also prompted some fascinating conspiracy theories. Should he have become F1's first rookie world champion in a season full of controversy for McLaren? We'll let you decide that, and later we'll revisit one of the only comments Hamilton has ever given about it. But for now, let's look back at why some people believe there are still questions unanswered about the dramatic conclusion of a memorable F1 season. And if you're not already a subscriber to our channel and would like to show your support and never miss another video from us, feel free to hit that button at any time. McLaren had internal and external battles to fight in 2007, as well as the implosion of its relationship with reigning world champion Fernando Alonso, it was also in trouble with the FIA. This was the year of the infamous spy scandal, where McLaren was found guilty of having access to 780 pages of information about Ferrari's car, provided by Ferrari's disgruntled former chief mechanic Nigel Stepney. FIA President Max Mosley had never seen eye to eye with McLaren chief Ron Dennis, and he came down hard on the team, dishing out a $100 million fine and excluding it from the Constructors' Championship. The points tallies of Hamilton and Alonso in the drivers' standings were spared, which was believed to be at the request of F1 ringmaster Bernie Ecclestone. Had the drivers been thrown out as well, a tense championship battle would have been over in a flash. But McLaren was still under investigation over the design of its 2008 car. Inside McLaren, there was a fear that it could still end up being banned from the following season if its car was deemed to carry Ferrari DNA obtained from the documents passed from Stepney to McLaren chief designer Mike Coughlin. The FAA cancelled that investigation in December, but by that stage, the final part of the 2007 season had already played out with a big cloud hanging over McLaren. With two races to go, Hamilton was on the verge of history, leading the championship by 12 points over Alonso and 17 ahead of Kimi Raikkonen with just 20 still up for grabs. Hamilton took pole in China, with Alonso furious to suddenly find himself half a second adrift in Q3, lining up fourth behind the Ferraris of Raikkonen and Felipe Massa. He kicked a door off its hinges in McLaren's paddock building and sparked whispers of sabotage by complaining about his tyre pressures and treatment within the team. In a damp race, Hamilton comfortably led the first stint, but Raikkonen came back at him after the pit stops. They'd left their worn intermediates on rather than risk bedding in a new set on a drying track, but when another shower fell, Raikkonen had more life left in his tyres and moved into the lead. When the rain stopped, plenty of other drivers switched to slicks, but McLaren left Hamilton out. The story goes that despite the state of Hamilton's fading tyres, McLaren was fearful of him switching too early, while Alonso, who had more life left in his intermediates and was closing, could stay out longer. Alonso's relationship with McLaren had totally broken down at this point, and while it wasn't official in public yet that he would leave after just one year, McLaren already knew he was moving on. What McLaren didn't want to do was have Hamilton offset against Alonso. The weather radar suggested no more rain was coming, but it didn't want to risk putting Hamilton in a situation where he would pit for slicks, then have to come in again if the weather turned, while Alonso and race leader Raikkonen could stay out and make one less stop. Hamilton stayed out even as a white band of canvas became visible on his rear tyres. When McLaren finally called him in, with no tread left, his car pathetically skated into the gravel trap at the pit entry. Hamilton was beached and out. Raikkonen won, Alonso was second, and F1 had a three-way title decider in Brazil. It sums up how fractious McLaren's year was that an FIA official was appointed to ensure equality between the two silver cars battling for the title. In the end, that proved irrelevant. Hamilton's Brazilian Grand Prix was a story of one disaster after another. From a front row start, he was shuffled down to third by Raikkonen, who balked Hamilton in the centre S. That allowed Alonso through as well, and even though fourth place would be enough for Hamilton to claim the title, he immediately tried to get the position back and ran wide at turn four. That dropped him to eighth. If Raikkonen won, which looked likely given Massa was expected to hand over victory if required, Hamilton needed fifth to win the championship. He was one place short of that when he approached turn four on lap eight and lost all of his gears. He lost 30 seconds coasting along 
as the team talked him through how to reboot the electrics. At the time, no clear explanation was given for what happened. However, years later, then McLaren engineering director Paddy Lowe explained the problem in an episode of the Sky Sports Race to Perfection series. Lowe said, We had what we subsequently determined was a hydraulic problem with the gear shift. It was actually a small piece of metallic debris that had got into one of the control valves where they had very fine ports and had disrupted the behaviour of this valve so the car would no longer change gear. After 25 seconds, this bit of debris presumably washed its way through the valve, and the valve cleared and started working normally. Lewis only missed the championship in 2007 because it was 25 seconds. If it had been 20, he would have been okay, he would have made up the places. Once Hamilton got going, he was down to 18th, 29 seconds adrift of the fifth place he needed, with plenty of the race still to run. The recovery was still on when he pitted for the first time on lap 20, but there was more confusion to come. McLaren decided to give Hamilton a short middle stint, allowing him to make progress with a light fuel load, then coming in earlier than originally planned for his second and final stop. But when it saw the tyres he'd used for the first stint, it realised he wouldn't have the tyre life to get through a long final stint under the revised plan. The decision was taken to switch to a three-stopper, which meant another costly 28 seconds lost by the extra visit to the pits. Hamilton could only recover to 7th by the finish, while Raikkonen was let through by Massa to win the race and the title. Alonso came home a quiet third, leaving him equal on points with Hamilton, as both McLarens lost out to Raikkonen by a point. Given the way McLaren's ability to manage a race and run a car smoothly crumbled in those final two races, it's no surprise that narratives have been created over the years suggesting Hamilton was the victim of something more than bad luck. In fact, that is a pretty common opinion held by many F1 paddock insiders. Will we ever find out if there was more to it than just an unlikely sequence of blunders and misfortune? Maybe one day. Hamilton has rarely talked about the end of 2007 in the years since, although he did say the events of China influenced his decision not to pit in the closing stages of the 2020 Turkish GP when he was on course to seal his seventh world championship. In 2012, F1 journalist Mark Hughes, who has written an in-depth feature about the end of 2007 for the race website, asked Hamilton if he ever found out exactly what happened. Hamilton's reply was fascinating. He said, I didn't know at the time, but I do now. It's not something I can talk about. What do you think went on at the end of that season? Was Hamilton unlucky? Did he and McLaren throw it away through making errors? Or was there something else going on? Tell us what you think in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And check out the link in the description below to read Mark's feature that this video is based on. And if you're not already subscribed to our channel, hit that button to show your support and make sure you never miss another video from the race.